What's going on guys and welcome back to the greatest review of all times I am the big cliche I am big papa pump without the pump I am the rock that is never hard King Kong got a lot on me This is TB our terabyte reacts and i will just like to say you're welcome we are back at it again guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to some more berserk reaction kind of seems like i'm doing these every couple of weeks i'm planning to change that up very soon guys don't worry about it um it's a new month um it's a new month um, and things are kind to slow back down now because we were preparing in September. We had to prepare for the upcoming holiday season. So now that that's out of that, all that paperwork and all that stuff is out of the way, I can get back to doing what I love. Well, another thing that I love to do, <laughs> and that is react and read through and read through these beautiful mangas, manga pages. Um... Just to let you guys know that I'm looking out for, for manga re, um, read-throughs, man. I'm I'm continuing the Ippo manga this weekend. I know I've said this multiple times before, but believe you me, I am going to start Ippo read-through this weekend. This weekend, okay? Um, if you guys have not watched the last video I put out about my Patreon, go ahead and check that out um, so you can understand what's going on with that okay it's up to you it's always your choice i will never ever take away somebody's free will it's your choice if you want to or not to support the channel you can go ahead and do that but i must let you guys know that all my read-throughs including of books game of thrones whatever i decide to do over there um it's going to be available over there whether it's be uh, like three to five days early earlier than the video being posted on YouTube okay so just to let you guys know I'm completely transparent about this stuff so it's up to you you can wait it's no issue you already was waiting <laughs> anyways um, so it's whatever I'm just letting you guys know that that's one of the benefits over there of joining up with the patreon so just go over there and support the channel man as I said, all of that money that's going to the Patreon will be invested back into it so that I can do stuff for you guys um, and all of that and all of that stuff. Maybe we can do meetups, all of that good stuff. I have big plans for the channel, for, for everything I have in life pretty much. But let's talk about it, man. Berserk Manga, last episode of the Berserk read-through, okay? We got some insight into, you know, Griffith and the Princess getting real close. And we found, also found out that um, the assassination that took place was very sad. You know, I didn't, I, I, you know, I wasn't sad to see the, 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 um, the count. N not the count. Was he a count? No, he wasn't a I don't think he was a count, but he was definitely next in line for the throne. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? But his son didn't need to die, but his son just happened to come into the room. And Guts has to take out the son, too. That was very sad to see. Um, there was a sense of instant regret also on his face because, he, you know, I don't think he meant he wanted to do it. But he did it. You know, and now everybody's wondering who killed, you know, who killed this guy, this assassination. And this all happened after he tried to take out Griffith anyways. And then Griffith told Guts to go take this guy out because he knew it was him. Um, there is something mysterious, but yet so revealing about Griffith that, you know, I'm happy to know about his, his story and stuff like that. And somebody has told me that. Volume 7 is going to be nuts, which we're going into today. So, I like that scene. Um, 
with Casca. That's why I said Casca is a babe. Okay, don't hate. She is a babe, and I like the fact that you know Guts took care of her and all that good stuff. So I guess we're gonna get to know more about her and her backstory and stuff that had happened in the past with her. We got to see how she met Griffith and uh, you know how she was basically kind of sold into slavery and in in you know as you know because I guess her dad had too many kids or something he decided to give her away or sell her I mean, who does this stuff man <laughs> you know what I mean but anyways man I know that is not too far fetched though back in the medieval days stuff like that used to happen all the time so it's not that far fetched you know it's just you know comparing it to modern day like no that would never fly <laughs> you know so um even though in some countries this this stuff still do happen there are even crazy laws you i hear about some laws today where it's just it's just completely nuts when you hear these people talk sometimes but anyways man we're gonna jump into volume seven man hopefully you guys are enjoying this you guys have let me know as much you know that you are enjoying my berserk read through even today even today so i think it was today or last night somebody wrote a comment saying they enjoy my berserk read through so i'm really happy to hear man anytime i hear from you guys and your thoughts on what's going on in the manga it's one of the most detailed mangas that i've ever read not that i've read that much anyways you know i'm more of an anime guys um uh, i'm more of an anime guy so when it comes on to like manga i've read mangas but i think maybe i've only read probably like i think around maybe three or four mangas um and that's and some of the times uh i think a couple of the times that i've read mangas is after i watch the anime i go back to see what the manga was like if it was you know way better you know just like what when i caught up to naruto i started watching them i started reading the manga and then was waiting on those episodes to be animated you get what i'm saying so um cool beans cool beans man love love the naruto manga way more than i love the anime even though the anime was was lit um there was a lot more things explained in the manga that was not that they kind of left out and left as a little bit too much of a plot hole in the anime uh, didn't really like that but you know i work with it still my favorite um anime series still my favorite anime of all times so you get what i'm saying like naruto is just in a special category that's why I'm, i don't even have it in my top five because it's just i just put it aside because no matter what you say or to say this is better or whatever naruto is always going to be the best for me depending on how things go with the patreon over the next week i will decide if i'm going to put the next one on or i'm going to wait but we'll we will see how things go um, if people start pouring into the to the um, to the patreon channel then I will start putting videos over there but if you know nobody's going over there I'm not gonna post any videos over there <laughs> let's do this man let's go um, um so yeah I'm talking too much let's do this all right so today welcome back welcome back again if you have not seen the intro and you just jump to the damn google drive <laughs> anyways man this one we're gonna be doing seems like another 10 chapters again is it 10 yeah 10 chapters again today um just like last volume um but anyways you know it's 200 pages so we're gonna get through it as as you already know every 30 minutes we take a break um um i just i go to the next recording guys i don't literally take a break <laughs> i don't literally take a break i'll take like water breaks which is something that i supposed to have here all the time when i'm doing these because my throat does get dry because i'm talking constantly <laughs> you know so um so yeah man so we're gonna jump into this um so i do the 30 minute interval intervals because they they um they process faster on the Google Drive when I don't do a long because imagine if I put a two hour video on Google Drive that would take forever to process so that's why I do those intervals guess you guys should know that by now but anyways man it looks like they starting off with completing the Costco 
um, backstory that we've been having. So, I'm going to jump into this, man. This manga is awesome. So, let's go. All right. So, we got um, back to when, you know, they were, you know... <laughs> The titties, man. <laughs> the titties. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, let's do this. Um, I wanted to put this all the way over, but whatever. Let's let let's do it. All right. So everything changed that day. From a life I continually endured. Oh, we have. Okay. Everything changed that day. How I thought. How I lived. Everything. From a life I continually endured, to a life of fighting to succeed. Okay, so I guess she's talking about the day she met Griffith. The paltry dining table by the fire with my family around became a glorious battlefield adjoined by death and blood. Okay, next page. All right, we've got Casca with Griffith. Casca, chapter three. Okay, since that day, the day I met Griffith, I even now... I feel it's been one long dream. Back then, I idolized Griffith. He was like some prophet or saint. <laughs> In effect, that's what he was to us. We were a ragtag band of commoners with no backing, ever victorious on the battlefield, fighting like some miracle. And most importantly, leading us was a young man. Who could still be called a boy in his innocence when in reality he wasn't a noble or knight even but a commoner like the rest of us he ain't no commoner no more a miracle yes in my eyes that's exactly what griffith was after a while i somehow carved out a life as a soldier at that time the hawks became involved in a certain food of lord this dude i hope they go to look for them man because they were all saying oh forget them whatever whatever but i hope i hope they they do go go to look for him he was said to be a man of fame because they're like oh they fell over the cliff so they did no he was said to be a man of fame a wealthy man intimately involved in foreign affairs but the worst rumors about him didn't involve his assets, rather his sordid taste. As attendants, he would employ children from neighboring villages, nearby all boys who met who met his taste for real. That that's what we're doing now. Who is this dude, man, and why didn't you chop his head off the first time you saw him? In truth, they were imprisoned within his castle as pleasure slaves. Boys. Oh my god, man. They would be at his side, children with eyes vacant of all but fear. I guess these days that's not just a strange sight. But to be honest, it sent a chill down my span. It would send a chill down anybody's spine, Casca. I ain't. I mean, I don't even like hearing it. It. I cringe every time I hear something like that, and I'm like, how? Why? A heart-rending sense of fear and disgust. I had almost become like that once. Oh, she could have been in that position, you know. So she definitely glad that Griffith saved her. So Griffith here puts a hand on her shoulder. And said, but just like the time by putting his hand on my shoulder, just from that, I mysteriously stopped trembling. Afterwards, following several skirmishes, he was a boy who had joined the band of the Hawk half a year before then to train to be a soldier. He was about 10 years old, and I don't know his name. He didn't really stand out enough to be noticed. There was no one to recognize the remains of this nameless soldier in training among the countless fallen. That is no one but Griffith. Oh, damn. So Griffith had a crazy past, too. I mean, I would imagine. I 
Griffin. What's that? This boy's belonging. Belongings? It was a toy. It was a toy night. Scuffed, dirty, and missing a leg. Casca says, Griffith, a toy on the battlefield? Hmm, that's very strange. But Griffith says, he must have greatly admired knights. I remember him well. He'd gaze at me as if I were the hero of some story. Now, hmm. I wonder if he was happy, dreaming. Did he die enchanted by his dream? Or was death the end of the dream? Was it despair? Maybe my dream is what killed this boy. Casca is saying, I couldn't find the words to speak. I'd never seen Griffith like that before. Never so, never so somber. Okay, I need to take my logo off. Sweet. All right. But ever since then, I've started viewing Griffith differently. Then one evening, upon returning to the castle Griffith so she's shouting for Griffith from down below right who is that look like somebody's behind Griffith whoa this is the same guy what This is the same guy that like little boys. What is this? Griffith was giving up the booty? Willingly? He's giving Casca the side eye like don't say shit. What? Wait a minute here. Okay. So Guts is shocked about hearing this. So Guts is like, hey, you're kidding, right? You mean Mr. Ball of Pride? For me too, it's surprising for me too. So Casca says, come dawn that morning, I couldn't sleep and was wandering along the river near the castle. So as you see somebody in the water, of the river. And it was Griffith washing himself off. And Casca is there. Looks like she turns around to leave. Griffith says, Why don't you join me? It feels nice. It says, Oh. So she's hesitated, and he's like, am I dirty? He's like, N so she's still hesitating, and she says, why? Why were you alone with him before? He's like, ah, you're right, my mistake, huh? That last night, a war counselor or something? So she's asking if it was a war council, you know, like a meeting. And he's like, no, you're not mistaken. So she asked him again, why? Why? Why would, would you, with someone like him? And he looks at her and says, money. So he was giving up the booty, man, like. Oh, man, when you got to resort to certain stuff, it's just like, it's kind of like how I view the life of a stripper. And I've always told people, like, I don't look down on strippers 
um, or I do look down on on girls that do porn, and I, I, there's a I think there is a distinct difference, and a lot of people will say no, they're no different because it's kind of like it's still sex work, right? If you want to call it that, it's still it's still sex work. Um, porn stars, it they don't really have a reason. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? They're just nymphomaniacs. They're just nymphomaniacs. I think strippers are a little bit more. If you talk to most strippers, they have a reason. Don't get me wrong. There are some of them that choose to do that because they feel like there's nothing else they can do. Um, but you do have a lot of strippers that they were kind of indoctrinated into that kind of life. You guys got to understand, when it comes, porn is very easy to get into, the porn business. It's very easy for girls, pretty girls, to get into. Why? And if it's... And it's a clear choice. It's a very clear choice. There's no thin line. It's it's there's no gray area when it comes on to that. There's no gray area. You get what I'm saying? It's either you're in it or you're out of it. You get what I'm saying? There's a choice that you go out making to get into the porn industry. You know what I'm saying? There's a choice because I've seen plenty of I've seen plenty of a watch plenty of documentaries on this and see how girls get into this stuff and you feel sad for them at the end you know but all in all and what i've always said is that free will is a thing that people think that they sometimes they don't have nobody held a gun to your head and told you this is what you have to do, to do in life to make money nobody you get what i'm saying that's why i respect people like lisa han who have come out and said multiple times this was my choice I chose to do it and I'm big enough to leave and not regret anything right so you have girls like that that I respect you know older I'm not saying that it's not I don't like talking about this but it just goes to show you that people make choices man I, I don't want to go any further but that's the argument for another day but you get what I'm trying to say what I'm saying like um, strippers do it for the money. They do it for the money. A lot of them, you talk to them, they are doing it because they 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 want to fund you know their college, um, to go to college and stuff like that. You know they want to be nurses. They want to do this. They want to do that. But you know, stripping was the 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 quickest way they could see to continue to do to do um to do it. Of course, they could do other things. Don't get me wrong. It's still a choice, but it, you know what I'm saying? It's still a choice, but they do it. And that's why I say it's not so bad because they don't have to do the sex part of it. All they're doing is just kind of like modeling their body in a certain type of way. Like, you know, you know, it, I, I'm working ho I'm working hard enough so that if I end up having a daughter, that that is not a choice that she could see that that's a choice on on the blackboard you know what i'm saying like see that as a choice on the blackboard to do like i'm going to give her as many options as possible as to not for her to not make that kind of choice you get what i'm saying even though you can't really tell your kids what to do but i'm going to try my best you know what i'm saying so as we continue here griffith says he does it for money i'm sorry about that guys sometimes i go off don't worry about it okay so an army consumes so much money just being, just being. Men, horses, equipment, provisions, none of it is free. This is Griffith talking, guys. And the band of the hawk will grow larger and larger. It has to. For that, too, we need a vast amount war found, war funds. Can't, don't be selling your booty for money, man. In any, in any case... I seem to appeal to that old man, and I was interested in his fortune. Our interests coincided. So, Koska's like, yeah, but, but, but still, aren't, is there, aren't we doing well enough now at this rate? If we can just keep winning, we'll eventually raise enough. He's, and he says, it would take too long. 
besides, with every with every battle fought, I lose more troops. I lose more troops. Griffith, is this because of that boy? And Griffith says, no. I thought about it logically. To go to battle ten times and lose hundreds of soldiers, or to seduce one old man, which is the lesser risk. Casca thinks about it, and then he says, Casca, listen. I don't feel at all responsible for my comrades who've lost their lives under my command. I guess it's because they themselves choose to fight. She says, Griffith says, that's just the way I am. But if for their sakes, for the sake of the dead, if there's something I can do. And she says, Griffith blood why does she why did she say Griffith blood did she see blood somewhere because I don't see blood anywhere and Griffith continues to say if there's something I can do that thing is to win oh he's literally oh I didn't even see that now I see it over there he's his fingernails are digging into his skin guys like this is crazy like when he said that, he's like, I'll keep winning to fulfill my dream to which they clung, putting their lives on the line. And Casca is calling out to Griffith, telling him to stop because he's literally like carving his nails into his own skin. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure he, he's not happy to do it, but he feels like he doesn't have a choice just to have the money. So he'll do anything to get that kingdom, that dream that he's talked about. You know what I'm saying? He was willing to do anything to to accomplish that goal, you know. And I feel like this this subject is a it's a tough one to talk about because you know, a lot of people might say, "Man, I would never do that ever." You know what I'm saying? I'm saying this in myself to let you, you probably would have to tie me down to get me to do some shit like that. You know, but who's to know? Some people just feel like they don't have a choice. And that's a feeling that's never, you know what I'm saying? That's never the situation. You know what I'm saying? That's never the actual situation. It's never the thing that you never have a choice you always have a choice but you in a position sometimes you feel like you don't have a choice it's a feeling you know what i'm saying um if you're forced to do something and uh, um that's why most of the time i don't like when people say i didn't have a choice and my question is always is this was this person threatening to kill you you know what i'm saying with a gun to your head you know what i mean like careers end man careers end people threatening to end your career and you're like oh my god I got this. no it's always a choice always a choice man always a choice so she's trying to get griffith to stop right she's trying to get griffith to stop I'm not even first is to trap it i'm always already down 20 minutes into this it's like my dream can only be realized by building upon their corpses it's a blood smeared dream after all she's crying trying to tell him to stop it's like i have neither regret nor remorse about that but but for hundreds hundreds thousands of lives to hang in the balance and myself alone not to be unclean what i want won't enter my grasp so easily as that Casca goes into the water after him. I mean, guys, like, literally, tch, that's crazy. She goes into the water, hugs him from behind, begging him to stop. Okay. And he's like, it's, it's nothing. Really? 
You, you. I'm alright. It's nothing, huh? Men. <laughs> Anyways, it was like, the Griffith who turned around to put his hand on my shoulder was the same Griffith as ever once more. Just then, what filled me with sadness, Griffith persists in trying to realize a kind of dream that most people abandoned long ago as a childish yearning. The guts is there wandering, but the dream he's chasing is so genuine and extraordinary that the burden must be immeasurable. A strong person, it's simple just to sum it up with those words, but I think that someone who wants to accomplish something grand endures that much more than other people. That is very true. That is a very true statement. I'm going to steal that quote. <laughs> that is a very true statement. I've said it a lot of times before, but I've never said it in this. just sounds more profound. <laughs> you know, if you want to achieve something greater, it takes a greater sacrifice. You know, that's what I've always told people. Um, whatever you, it, it, you know, the sacrifice got to match what you want to accomplish. Um, so it's a very true statement. I love that. So it's not. So she continues to say, it's not that he is strong. Griffith has to make himself strong. I want to be by his side. If he's going to sacrifice everything for his dream, if his dream is to fight and cut away his own path, then I want to be his sword. Wow. She's really in love with this dude. I have no doubt she sees that she's in love with him. Um... I don't want to say it's merely, you know what? I'm not going to go as far as to say love. I want to say she, is her admiration for him is very high. Like she thinks very highly of him. Of course, it's very evident in her actions towards him, of course. Um, she admires him a lot. She thinks of him as maybe her, her best friend. I don't want to go as far as to say she loves him. I really don't. I don't want to go that far yet. I have to see clear evidence of that. I have not seen clear evidence of her being in love with him. She does watch him from afar a lot. Maybe a crush, but I wouldn't want to go as far as to say she's in love with him, want to marry him or anything like that. Okay, so on to the next chapter. That was the end of the Casca back, st back story. Hopefully, they're still looking for these dudes. So, we're going here. Next chapter. Okay, so the battle ensues. Battle, 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 we've lost countless comrades. Few old faces remain, yet still more people have joined us. Before I knew it, I too was a veteran. Having Griffith trust me deeply made me realize my own worth. So Kasuke is still talking here. I guess it continues, they just didn't... I thought this was going back to, you know, present time. Um... But it's Casca still talking. Okay. I want to be at his side. I want to be something he can't do without in achieving his dream. I believe that wish would come true. I was able to believe until that day. Was it the day that Guts came in? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Because of the picture. Because of the picture, I was like, I knew because I remember this. I remember when <laughs> when they met, I remember exactly what Guts was reading. I was like, until that day, the day you showed up. <laughs> uh, so Guts is scuffing. It's like, do you remember that day what Griffith said to you on top of that hill? I want you. Yeah, <laughs> those words. He never says anything like that. Griffith had never said such a thing to anyone, nor was he, nor has he since then. You know, I couldn't stand it. Yeah, we all know you were a jelly. <laughs> you got Griffith to say that to, to you so easily. I envied you. But I like how she's drawn right here. Really pretty. Um... But, even so, I tried to convince myself that Griffith wanted you. But Griffith 
so calm and composed, always gets impulsive when it comes to you. It's as if, as if, Griffith relies on you, you know, and yet you're selfish. You just run off, not thinking of consequences. And she grabs him by the shoulders. What I can't forgive is that selfishness of yours. The fact that you've almost gotten Griffith killed. Okay. And she's got tears in her eyes. I don't. This is not a great position. <laughs> I do not like that. But anyways. I don't care if you get yourself killed on some battlefield. But the band of the hawk. I won't let you take Griffith Street down with you. You know, Guts is looking at her funny. She's just crying on him. She's like, you're the one who changed Griffith that way. And I can't forgive you. Why is it? Why? Why does it have to be you? Why? <laughs> I think he heard something. Seems like he heard something. Somebody coming. Yeah, they're appro somebody's approaching. It pushes her head down. What the? Shh. He tells her to shush. Is this? Yes, it's the enemy looking for them. So they're like, hey, you sure this is it? They're like, no doubt, man. But come on, ain't they dead by now? They fell off that cliff. Doesn't matter, sir. Seradon swore he'd pay the bounty whether they're dead or alive. And hey, after all, they're the Band of the Hawks captain and woman commander. Let's look a little more downstream. The bodies could have washed away in this fast current. If we don't move, some otters, be, some otters will beat us to it. And it's like, so God says, hey. And he's trying to give her something, like, for the fever, drink it. No real time to waste. We leave as soon as the sun sets. So they're looking for them. They got back in their armor. They're heading back up the cliff, it seems. She's like, cough. She falls on her knees. Guts are, ask her, what's wrong? Seems like she's tired. <laughs> so Guts is like, what the hell? Women are such royal pains. <laughs> no physical strength. Things go to their heads so damn fast. And periods to top it off. Just look at you. I guess they just ain't cut out for it. Battle, that is. It's like, what do you know? What would I know? What he's like? What do you know? He's like, what would I know? I'm a man. <laughs> he's like, what would I know? I'm a man. <laughs> like, what I do know is this: there's no way you're gonna sit here like this forever because of your woman's problems. <laughs> it doesn't matter to the enemy if you're a woman or whatever; they might actually like it. You know, I think he's trying to motivate her. You know, using reverse psychology. I'm sensing that. So. Basically trying to tell her to get a grip and get up. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got time for your woman problems right now. You know what I'm saying? So she gets up and she's like, let's go. <laughs> you get him, Kai. You you go, Casca. I love you, man. I love her character. So um, he smiles when he sees her get up. Somebody fires an arrow at him. And Guts pushes, pushes her out the way. Off the arrow, barely misses her. Then he, you know, you know, Guts is gonna pull the sword. And right, here we go. So, boom. So they, wow, they're surrounded quickly. Damn. All these guys, he's like swarms of them. 
where they all come from that's what i want to know where all these dudes come from all of a sudden and they're like oh there they are isn't this the dude that he split his head into <laughs> it's like so you're alive haha you make me happy boy looking lively yourself pal he's like impudence look or not I'm through being given a hard time by a low-life lout like you. As a proud knight of Tudor, it annoys me to no end. I won't just kill you either. Once you're my prisoner, I'll personally administer the torture technique passed down through my Coborlwitz family for 200 years. You'll get your fill of er hell on earth with the 100 year convulsive death this guy is like overkill much <laughs> he's like you sure hold a grudge <laughs> God says you sure hold a grudge the hell's that well same to you so he's like if you surrender quietly very well if you defy me I'll chop off an arm or two just so long as you survive for the woman, she'll be a toy for my men here. So Guts is like, maybe you'd rethink that one. <laughs> She's a nightmare. <laughs> you know, he's laughing at this dude. She's like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> she'll bite it right off. <laughs> and Casca hits Guts in the back of the head. <laughs> he's, like, hmm. he's like, huh? You dare provoke me? Take them! So everybody attacks. You know Guts is gonna mince meet these dudes. You already know. Like, I know it's coming. The half cuts them in half. Oh my god, man. I don't know why these guys don't learn their lesson yet. Just like, this is one. You just, you don't mess with the black swordsman, man. You just don't. You just don't, you know, as I said, black swordsman, I remember, I remember that in Sword Art Online, that's what they call Kirito, um, at the beginning, at the beginning of the story, that's what, that's what they called him because he was running solo. I just, I just remember that in Sword Art Online, if you guys have not seen that series, which pretty much I'm pretty sure all of you guys have seen Sword Art Online. So that's what they called him, the black swordsman, because he had the black coat and he had he had the sword too. He, as a matter of fact, I mean, other than the overall looks of the character, in style and fashion, Kirito kind of looked, you know what I'm saying? He had the same demeanor as Guts. You get what I'm saying? Not necessarily like the badass, scruffy look, like how look looked like as a character, you know what I'm saying? Like character models, drawing looks. Just talking about like the overall, the black coat, you know what I'm saying? Even though Kirito's coat was a little bit it was a little bit different. Um, Guts is more wearing a cape, but Kirito was wearing a coat. Like, it had sleeves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it had sleeves, but it was a long coat, and he had a big ass... The, well, not really a big sword. It, was a, it wasn't like... It wasn't as big as Guts, but you get what I'm saying. Overall, look, they called him the Black Swordsman. I wonder if that's where... I wonder if the... Um, the art, the author for Sword Art Online. I'm wondering if he got inspired by, you know, this, by Berserk. You guys can let me know that. Um, as usually sometimes when I do stuff like that, you guys are like, man, you got that spot on. <laughs> but, anyways, man, let's do this. All right, so Guts is chopping up these guys. They went after Casca. Casca takes. Looks like he chops this. Looks like she chops this guy's head off. Yes. Head separated from body, you already know. Casca. Okay, so Guts looks at her and smile and says, You've done it. Oh, she is saying, You've done enough for me. And he replies, Fear enough. And that's the end of the chapter. And we will now take a break to go to the next video. All right, let's continue. Let us continue here. So, all right, so we got prepared for death. 
chapter two. Okay, this let's pull this over. So we got my dude over here. Ah, don't falter. There's two of them. More than two of you attack at once. They're just gonna chop up each other. <laughs> Die quickly. Anyway, so we got. You already know mincemeat everywhere. Everybody's body being separated from their lower body. <laughs> um. Guts is going at him. Wow. They are bringing the spears. Look like... What? Did they get him? What is that? Seems like something interrupted that. Why is Guts... Oh, they lunged at him and he jumped. Because I was like, wait a second. Wow, he's quick. He jumped up. What is Guts going to do? If... G I'm telling you guys now. If the next panel... Is him taking all three heads off at once. I am going to go nuts. I am going to go nuts. Mm. What? He steps on one of them's shoulder. He steps on the shoulder. Puts the sword in his mouth. My guy. My guy. <sighs> oh my god all right let's try to make out what he did here then he lands after he puts the sword in his mouth sometimes he can't really make out because he's like sometimes he includes like multiple frames of work in the same panel and sometimes you can't really make out what really happened you got to really look at the image of what guts is doing because i think after he chops the guy looks like he chops his head right because this is him right let's go to the next panel okay he did something i can't make it out you guys probably can let me know what happened there in that panel because i can't spend all day trying to figure that out I'm, he did something <laughs> okay so we have Casca facing off with some dude with a spear here um she goes at him and it looks like she takes him out. Cuts. Looks. Oh, she cuts his arm. She cuts his arm. She holding that. She. She. She out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? You gotta show them, Casca, that you ain't no. You ain't no princess out here. You know what I'm saying? Let them know you are a warrior too. I've always wanted to see her really fight because we've never actually seen her fight. You know what I'm saying? Like she went up against guts and and lost. You know what I'm saying? And. In, in, she acted like she didn't know what was happening in this part of the, the, you know, this war that was, or this battle that was happening. You know, that's why she ended up, because Guts had to come and save her, because she froze, right? So, okay, so she um, cuts a dude's arm, so he's down on the ground. Another guy's trying to swing at her, and she... Holds his arm. Why is she holding his arm? Oh, she hold his arm. You see, this is what I'm saying. Like, he does this really well. It's kind of like frame-by-frame frame animation. And that's why sometimes you got to really pay attention to his panels because it may seem like, you know, it's three Koskas, like, right here. But it's really it's really not. He's just showing the, showing the thing that happened in motion. So... It's pretty cool. I like when he does that. So, obviously, sli she slices through this dude. Slices his arm off, it seems. Um, pretty cool stuff. Right? And she's like, oh, she got my artery. Yeah, you're going to bleed out in a minute or two. Okay. So, back to back with Guts again. He's like, Ugh, worthless. Every last one of them. Samson. Samson. And he's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. What are these guys? It, it, anybody shows up on the battlefield with this much armor, you know that they're terrible. They're, they're just terrible. They're just terrible. You know they're going to die instantly. This is a common trope in, in, in anime and, and manga stuff. Dynasty people show up in too much armor. They're super crappy. 
usually very crappy. So he's like second in command of the Blue Whale Ultra Heavy Armored Pierce Assault Annihilation Knight Corpse Samson. <laughs> oh my god, that name is way too long. He's my little brother. And in our core, he's a warrior second only to myself. So why don't you fight, man? The thickness of Samson's armor is three times ordinary plate. Even if he were buried in a rock slide, it wouldn't even be dented. And his iron ball can smash a water buffalo's skull with one strike. All that be left of a human are chunks of flesh. Like, go! Show no mercy! But show them a heart. Cabarrus with pride. It's a weird ass name, but okay. And, and Samson goes in, he's like, Hoorah! <laughs> Hoot out of the way! So he goes in with his heavy ball and chain. And, uh. It looks like he's knocking his compadres out of the way. He's like, what freakish. <laughs> What freakish strength? What freakish strength? This is <laughs> this is Casca talking. What freakish strength? A direct hit from that would shatter a sword. But I can't dodge that ball in my condition. What now? Don't worry, guts is here. <laughs> so, Samson goes in for another swing right at guts. Guts steps up. And meet sword with ball. What happened? Did he knock it back? Seems like he knocked it back. Yo. He knocked it back straight into a soldier's head. <laughs> oh my god. They're like, oh, hey, he hit it back. It's like, bother. <laughs> so he goes in again. Oh my god, he's swinging it and and. Guts is just knocking it all around. He said, you ain't ready for prime time, my guy. Get out of here with your ball and chain. They're like, ridiculous. He's stopping all of Samson's strikes. Ah, they're so fast. He hasn't got time to dodge. So Kaska is like, no. With this skill, it should be possible for Guts to dodge and counterattack. There's no need for him to damage his sword taking this head on. He's protecting you, Casca. So she's like, is it is it my fault? Yeah, he's protecting you. That's why he ain't dodging or moving out of the way because you're still standing there. Because he knows you can't dodge. So she's like, oh, he's wounded. I know. Looks like the arrow wound you got protecting the woman hasn't quite healed yet, has it? Oh yeah, he got an arrow. He got an arrow wound when he when he I think it was when he right before he fell off the cliff with her. So I was like, ah. Uh. I was like, hey, yeah. So she, guts is talking to Casca now. He's like, I'll buy you a chance. Highlight. I'll buy you a chance. Hightail it through the forest. But, so she's like, but 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 then, what are you doing? He's wounded. She's like, but then, and then um, dude with the big mouth still talking. What are you doing? He's wounded. Go on and settle this. So it looks like Samson goes in again. And this time, guts cuts the ball the spike ball into and shatters it oh my god how is this dude so strong man like hey yo and he's going for that hey boy he coming for that hey boy he goes in it looked like did he block it yo didn't you just say that this armor could not be broken? 
Where your head at? Where your head at? Bruh. Guts is too strong, man. Guts is too strong. And that's a feat. Of course. That is a feat for Guts. That is crazy. This guy just broke triple strength armor, according to my guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And everybody is like... Everybody's like, Nani, impossible. <laughs> he broke that is like, no. So he's like shouting out to Casca, telling her to run. So he's like, don't stand there and stare. Get moving. She's like, but. And he's like, what are you doing? Run, fool. And she's like, no, no, I can't do that. I can't just run off alone. So they're like, fire. And so he got like, fire. Shoot the woman to death. Shit. So they're like, shot at Casca. They shot at her. And damn, Guts gets over there and blocks and blocks it. Took a couple of arrows too. And she's like, Guts. And Guts is like, I told your ass to run. Now I got to take arrows for you, man. What's what? It's like, duh, ha, ha. you don't are laughable. But once, not once, but twice, for just one woman? What a simpleton. And she's like, why? So Guts is like, that prick being laughed at by him pisses me off. And she keeps asking him why. And <laughs> Guts is like, don't get the wrong idea. Sick as you are, you're just in my way, so get lost. And this is one of the things about Guts that are, that a lot of times, uh, and this happens even to us as as men when it comes on to women and interacting with, with, with women. Like, it's a lot of times we can't really, we feel like we can't show our true feelings or say what we actually mean. And we, you know, we end up saying something that we will regret later. And I know he's saying this to, you know what I'm saying? Like to make it seem like he's the same selfish asshole. When we all know Guts is not necessarily selfish. It's just that he has his reasons for the reason why he does things. So you just got to read into a lot of things that he says and do. So, so she's like, it ain't my way to run off. Besides, I got a score to settle with, Bright Boy. Okay, so that's not her talking. That was Guts. And it's like, it's like you said before. Maybe I'm satisfied just as long as I can swing my sword around. We all know that's not true. So, <laughs> so he said, this right by you? Dying in a place like this? Here? This worthless place? Is this where it ends for you? Is what you want that cheap? He said, a sword returns to the sheath. Right? Go to your sword master. Is that go back? Don't be scared. Surround them. That, go to your sword master. Go to Griffith. So he's basically sending her to Griffith. Um... I think she's going to end up staying, though. Okay, so he, he comes back. That was crazy, man, how he split that dude's head. So he's standing there against all these dudes. And now he's going in. He's giving them that work. Brilliant artwork, by the way. We're at Prepared for Death, Chapter 3. Okay, it's like. He going in on them and crying out to Casca again. Don't just stand there. Go now. I was like, woo. So she turns around and walks away with tears in her eyes. Like, I swear I'll come back with the others. Until then, don't die. She runs off. And they're like, don't let her escape. Kill her. No. Hang on. You can chase girls after you've done your job.
bunch of wage thieves. I was like, son of a bitch. Ah. <sighs> Oh my god, man. This dude out here cracking skulls, my guy. Look at this, man. Oh my... This guy is so good with his drawings, bro. I feel like... I feel like I'm watching real... Like, it's so realistic. It's crazy. I like... So they're like, so quick. Takes another one down. And another one. And another one. Like, a, what? Eh? What, what, what is this guy? He cuts down fully armored men like they were grown ground cherries. <laughs> they go flying with every stroke. N nobody told me the enemy had someone like him. My sword's dull? Why are you lying, Guts? Bruh, ain't no dull sword doing what you're doing right now. Because if you are fighting with a dull sword right now, bruh, that puts you on another level of beastly. If you're fighting out here with a dull sword. It's like, my sword, my sword's dull. It don't cut too well. Although it's over three times thicker than, heavier than a regular one. If one hit don't kill, kill you, you wish it had. True. He's like, damn you! All of you, what are you waiting for? No matter how skilled he is, he's just one wounded man. It's no big deal. Just surround him. There were a hundred of us. Yeah, but that don't mean we want to die. <laughs> he's like, won't anyone here get revenge for Samson? And they're like, should we? He's the one who went and got himself killed. It's like, you call yourselves proud knights of Tudor. We're, and he's like, we're just mercenaries, man. <laughs> and he's like, whoever takes his head, I guarantee you three, no, five times the bounty, and you'll be put in charge of a hundred men. And they're like, five times? What do you think? Hey, what do you think I think? I bet he can't move too well with those wounds. If about five of us were to take him, you go first, all of us at once. <laughs> and <laughs> Guts is like, maybe I, maybe I ought to leave too. <laughs> and they're like, all together now. And he's like, right, right. That's how me mercenaries get things. Done. <laughs> okay, so Casca takes off. She's gone. She's running through the woods. She's tired. She's like, Oh, so they they are people following her. It's like pursuers, four, no five. Damn, somebody jumped out to jump off the top of a stone, coming at her. Thank God she saw him. She took him out. Boom, they come again at her from the side. She kicks him in the mouth. Ooh, I know you felt that. Rearrange your mouth situation. It's like, hey, that bitch. <laughs> she takes off again. Guts is still fighting. Separating heads from bodies, bodies from, from waists. Oh, my God. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. These panels are nuts. See hands flying. Chest getting cut. Oh, my God. I need this man said he's fighting with a dull sword. <laughs> Somebody shot a, a arrow at him from a crossbow. He blocks it with his hand. Bruh. And it goes right through, too. Now he's fighting with one hand. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. And he just... And Guts just puts the fucking sword right through his mouth. I got... You were gonna say, I got him? <laughs> too bad. So they're like... And so you're like, good. His left hand is totally messed up. Now he won't be able to swing that ridiculously big sword around so easily. And he cracks. He's like, huh. He just takes. He takes the arrow. Did he take it out? He said. He said. Now this is getting interesting. <laughs> uh. 
So she's over here still trying to get away. It's like, no use, can't, can't run anymore. So she falls, somebody tries to attack her again. And she has to kill another person. She had to kill this guy too. Man, she's dodging out here though. Yeah, why you would kill another guy? Woo, she's out here dodging like the Matrix. We out here, man. Casca, first time I see her actually fight, she's doing pretty good, man. Um, So it's like, so they come after her. Three of them left. Her swords fall out of her hand. She was trying to reach for it. And it seems like they kip, kicks it away. Now they're stepping on her hand. Oh, man, she's in trouble. It's like, you caused us a lot of trouble, girly. We'll put you out of your misery soon enough, but you stuck it to a bunch of our guys. So, as thanks, we're going to stick it to you before you, <laughs> before you go. And they're trying to... P so, they take her, arm, her armor, her chest plate off. It's like, don't look that way. We're going to give you some fun before you go to the afterlife. So much fun. You will thank us. Damn, they exposing the titties, man. Come on, bro. This is not good. Huh? It's like frustrated. He said, maybe you do command a thousand men. But you're pretty cute in this position. Again. I can't even shove a creep like him aside. My arm. I feel so powerless. And they're like, don't think about biting your tongue. It'd be boring if you died now. So she's still thinking, like, here, this worthless place, is this where it ends for you? Go back. Go to your sword master. So she's remembering what Guts said to her. I won't bite my tongue. And they're like, oh? <laughs> oh, well, she's desperate now. This won't be as exciting if she don't struggle a bit. It's like, however, I won't let you have your way with me either. Ooh, get him in the eye. Yeah. Fight, girl. You better fight. Let's go. Stab him in the eye with whatever that is. And I know that does not feel good. Right in the eye. Hmm. You get up real quick, don't you? And he's like, yeah. He's like, you little. She jumps for the sword. And a bunch of arrows came out of nowhere. Stuck that guy. Is this Griffith? Of course it is. No. Who is that on top of the thing? Who is that? And they're like, that's about far enough. And she's like, she's the only woman for us. So she won't come cheap. Who are these guys? They look different. And weird. <laughs> Guts is still over here fighting, man. Like a boss. He going in. Takes off another head. Oh my god. So they're over here talking and like, ah, Impossible. With one arm? He's killed half of a hundred men. This is a feat, man. That's why I said, that's why I said this is a feat. I mean, other than the fact that he's fighting with a freaking blunt sword, this is a feat. So, like, Impossible. With one harm killed up killed half of a hundred men. This isn't just a fluke. So Guts is like, what? It is there's still that many left? The sun's gonna come up before I finish splitting your heads. <laughs> just trolling the hell out of them right now. So he's like Don't falter! He can barely stand now. Fall up, fall upon him all at once. 
So they're all trying to attack now. They go for it. Somebody speared his arm. So he's feeling it right now. And he's going in. Yeah, he got look like he got hit in the leg too. Down there. He's like, what the hell am I doing? In this dumb place, risking my life so cheaply. Is it for her? No, probably not. Right now, no time to think. All there is now is how to cut, how to kill, that's all. Even these thoughts will slip my mind in time. And then, only the beat of my heart still remains. Okay, what's going on over here? There's a, hey, sorry about that for the delay. It took a while to convince the powers that be. She just falls over on him. He's like, he's Guts is hurry. So she's trying to send them to Guts. Guts. He's like, Guts, what happened? This way, hurry. Hey. Someone give her a hand. Forget about that. So I could get away. He, he stayed behind all the enemy. If we don't hurry. So they're like, right, come on. Like, be in time. Please be in time. So they're hurrying back to Guts. And they're like, here. Sorry about that. He's like, here. So they finally got back to where Guts is. And they see all the bodies. All the bodies. Ah, the humanity. The straight homicide. <laughs> the straight freaking genocide that just happened over here on the battlefield the guts is like oh wow you're kidding right there's almost a hundred corpses he couldn't have all by himself you don't know guts man <laughs> guts man yo that is the pose my guy this is the pose i told i already told you guys that next year, next year, I'm going to Comic-Con dressed as Guts, no questions asked, it's final, and this is the pose. I'm going to be at the Comic-Con doorway with this pose right here, bruh. I'm going to be at the doorway just sitting at the door with this pose with that big ass sword just leaning on me. That, oh my god, this pose, and there's another pose that he does, man, that is absolutely it's iconic. It has to be iconic in the series, right? So, got guts there with the with the with the the beastly pose on the tree with the sword leaning up on the shoulder, man. That I love when they do this. I love it. I'm glad they gave this close up because this is definitely going to be my screenshot. This is definitely going to be my thumbnail for YouTube. Definitely, definitely, my definitely. Okay, so. Um, okay. <laughs> Just smile, man. This is crazy, guy. Oh, my God. I love this series so much. And I'm nowhere close to catching up. But I love it already. Anyways, man. All right. So, we got... Okay. All right. So, we got... So, they cry now. They finally find him. And they see him. Casca finally find him. I think... I think Casca is going to have a, a totally new... Um, attitude towards guts after this, I really do. So, like guts, they're like, "Hey, looks bad. This looks bad." Like, keep it down. Like, hey, and he's like, "Don't, don't shake me. <laughs> You'll just make the wounds worse." She smiles. Wow, she smiles and said, "Guts," and she tears up again. Like, like, move, move, clear the way. Open up half. Emergency, they're back. And like, they're back. That bastard survived after all. Talk about stubborn. You're a bum. I hate you. Just, just so you know, you piece of cr crap. It's like, you're exaggerating. Let me off, I'll walk. <laughs> 
Guts is such a badass. He's such a man's man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, don't move. You'll hurt yourself. It's like, this is a disgrace. So they brought him into the tent. The tent. I mean, he's like, ow, ow. I said, ow. Look. You, I ain't a rag doll. How about being a little careful? And you're like, ah, stop that. You're in bad enough shape as it is. <laughs> He's like pushing the, the doctor off. <laughs> He's like, what a frightful man. Normally someone that many wounds should have passed out long before now. So they all come in and they're asking about him. It's like, how is he? Hmm, he's a tough one. Well, I don't suppose his life is in danger. But he must rest. In other words, he's he's through for this campaign. <laughs> Guts is like, screw you! I'm fighting till the end of this campaign, even if I have to crawl. It's like, the doctor replies, you don't. If you follow through with that, I can't guarantee your survival. Survival gar... He's like, survival guarantee? What the hell's that got to do with war anyway? <sighs> Fine then. I won't be responsible for the outcome. Do as you will. And he's like, whatever. And he's like, well, in any case, thank goodness you two were able to make it back safe and sound. Like, <laughs> so Guts is thinking, like, safe and sound how? <laughs> He's like, by the way, where's Griffith? A war council at headquarters. Okay, so he left this morning. Oh, he won't be back until tomorrow. Okay. So, he said, and just when these two came back, bad timing. So they're all like, Casca, you don't need to be treated? And she's like, I'm fine. Mine's not an injury. So everybody's wondering why she said that. Okay. So they're celebrating, having a blast. They're like, oh yeah, we were, we really weren't sure what would happen for a while there. I guess we've got Captain Guns to thank this time around. We must have, we must have really worried you all. Oh man, we're so relieved, sis. You know, though it's pretty cold for even Boss Griffith to go to a war council right now, they're like, cut it out. Go back. Go to your sword master. Go to Griffith. I think the reason why she's thinking about this is, is like, why do you care so much about somebody that really doesn't really give a damn about you? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that. I don't want to say that Griffith doesn't care about her. I think he has some level of care for his comrades and stuff like that. But I do, I, I do believe why she's thinking about this now is, is, is like this. In, in no uncertain terms, Griffith, as what we can see from the examples and getting to know the type of person he is, he will do anything to accomplish his dreams. The fact, the reason why the guy is saying that it's cold for him to leave at a time like this is because, I mean, it's kind of, it kind of is kind of cold for him to know that two of his commanders are basically missing and he's, you know what I'm saying? And he's gone to a, to a meeting, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't, tr he, I, I, as a matter of fact, when the guy showed up, I thought it was Griffith. As you can see, I thought it was him because I expected him to go, you know what I'm saying? But I guess he didn't go. He's at some war council. So I don't know how he's going to answer for that. But I think that's what she's thinking about, you know, comparing the two and be like, you know, if probably if it was Griffith, I don't think Griffith would have done what Guts was doing for her. I don't know. Maybe that's what she's thinking about. I don't know. Just speculating. So she gets up. Um, no, this guy. Who is this guy? I keep seeing this face and I don't know. You guys remind me who this person is because I think I've seen the person before, uh, but I'm not sure who, who the person is. Okay, so Casca calls out to Casca. Could I see you for a bit? So she gets out. She's like, what? I thought I'd tell you something. 
When Griffith decided to send out a search party to find you two, the nobles around him strongly opposed his decision for various reasons. But Griffith said, and plainly, those two are vital to the band of the Hawk. I will not lose them. Okay, as I said, he has some level of care for both of them. I know that. Um, but I don't think it's to the point where they would want it to be knowing that they've come from such a long way. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what she's kind of thinking about. Like, why didn't he come to have stuff like that? So that's pretty cool of him to say, though. So she's like, Griffith said that? It's like, yeah, that's a big deal. Him saying all that. Truthfully, I was ta I was a tad jealous. Oh God, would you stop it crying? <laughs> and he's and then he's like, then there's this. Put some on the hero of the hundred. Put some on the hero of the hundred. Oh, that's what they're calling guts now, hero of the hundred. That's a pretty cool name. I'm not gonna lie, hero of the hundred, the black swordsman. I like it. I like it. Okay. Yeah, that's probably going to be the title of my video. Okay, I'm gonna I'm write that down. So I don't forget. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. Uh, I'm writing. I swear to God, I'm writing that junk down. Come on. Come on. I'm writing that down. Sorry for the pop, for the brief moment. Hero of the hundred. That is going to be my title for the YouTube video. Okay. <laughs> Hero of the hundred, powder, so she's like powder medicine. There was this elf in a traveling entertainment troupe I used to work for years ago. I wonder if it's the same, I wonder if it's the same elf. It looks like him. It looks like him from the picture. Maybe all elves look alike. <laughs> Anyways, he was good folk, and that's what he gave me when I was badly injured in an accident. Elf dust. Is that elf? No way. It's true. Well, I guess not too many people believe in them these days, but they really exist. Yes, they do. Whether you believe in them or not doesn't matter. Just that the powder is certified effective. I've escaped death even on the battlefield, thanks to that stuff, that's the last of it. But something so valuable? Don't sweat it, it's a good deal. If you think about it, one bag of medicine for a hundred dead enemies, I'll take that any day. Okay, so, looks at him, she says, thank you. you d d no wonder I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't remember his name because it's this damn funny ass name. Judo. Judo. <laughs> huh? Showing a soft side. What do you suppose happened? Yeah, a lot happened between them. They were pretty much naked together. <laughs> you know, guts had to warm her up. So she's running back to, um, to the place and guts is already <laughs> back under the tree with the infamous pose. That's what I'm talking about right there. We're men. All right, so we're gonna stop here, move on to the, this one went for 40 minutes. I don't usually do that, but see you guys for the next part. All right, guys, we are back and I'm, I should have drank water during the break, but hey, you're gonna have to wait a bit. This water right here, you know what I'm saying? You hear me? Yeah, here in these streets, you know what I mean? Before we continue, <sighs> okay, so let's now that we have that out of the way. My, I think we're about halfway through. I'm not, I'm not even sure how many chapters we've done already. I think we've done four or five. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I think we're halfway through, though. Okay, let's continue. All right, so got the infamous pose by the tree. Casca walks up, 
This one is this chapter is called Campfire of Dreams. Okay, I like that title. I guess we're gonna have maybe a tender moment between the two of them. But she is she's an absolute beauty. That like well and she and, and the thing I like about her character model the most is she's not your typical looking um girl in 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 manga and it's, she's a very different look very different look and that's what i like with the short hair you don't really see a lot of girls in manga being drawn with short hair like this this kind of cut you may see short hair but it's like shoulder length you know what i'm saying um but most of the time you know they don't look like this you know so So Guts looks at her. She says, "Is this okay? You not resting?" Guts replies, "I feel too hot to sleep. This was the coolest place." So she goes to with the ointment powder or whatever, puts it on one of his wounds. She tells him not to move, and he says, "Oh, the pain's fading." He's like, what's this stuff? She says, Jadu gave it, gave it to me. Mystical healing medicine, he said. She, that, come on, turn around. It's not something you should worry about, huh? That was something I did on my own. It wasn't really for your sake. Fighting is more my nature than running away. Just because it's your nature, so she replies, just because it's your nature, you fought close to a hundred enemies. He's like, yeah. Besides, I had a score to settle with that dude. I was so into swinging my sword that I don't know what happened to him, though. Yeah, what happened to him? <laughs> Did he run away? But still, to be blunt... And I thought this then too. Compared to what you're doing, me fighting with a hundred men doesn't really matter. Wow. It ain't just you. Griffith's the same way. He's got something he'd bet his entire life on. I think that kind of thing's amazing. Compared to that, if I were to go out and fight a hundred or a thousand men, it wouldn't really be any big deal. That's what I thought. What a nice view. Guts. You, you know Gaston? He's my second in command. The army's not really Gaston's thing. Once the war is over, he plans to open a clothing shop in downtown Winham with money he saved up. He's more skilled than he looks. Nicole proposed to a woman but she refused because she didn't want to be with a common soldier he swears he'll get promoted to leading a hundred men soon and propose again he doesn't care how risky he'll be in battle well I guess everyone stalked themselves on loss staked I mean everyone staked themselves on lost causes so when I look out there it's like each one of those lights contains tiny dreams and hopes that's the way it looks campfire of dreams huh so, <laughs> so she's like you smooth talker you smooth talker you sound like some princess can it <laughs> he's like but you're right. Maybe they've all brought their own individual little flames together. You could scatter them just by blowing so all those little flames throw themselves into the biggest bonfire. The Blazing Inferno. Named Griffith. Okay. But no. But you know, my flame ain't here. As for me, maybe I'm just warming myself. 
by that campfire for a bit. Maybe I just stopped in by chance. She's like, Guts. As long as I have this, I'm confident I can survive in any battle. That's how it's been up till now. Even before I joined the Band of the Ark, no matter how badly the battle was lost, I myself was sure to survive. Like this time. But still, it don't really mean much. I was on the battlefield before I was old enough to understand things. The mercenary leader who raised me taught me nothing beyond how to wield a sword. I had nothing but this. I don't want to die. But just because I didn't want to die, just because I didn't know more than how to use this, I kept fighting in battles. And maybe more than anything, I've always tried to leave the most essential reason for fighting up to other people. Guts you. <sighs> oh well, oh hell. Too much talking for me. What was I rambling about? And why the hell did I tell you all that? Pathetic. <laughs> He's like back at you. And that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of times you, you is is true self. You know, it peaks out sometimes, but you know, you got to still keep that rugged, you know, you try to keep that rugged part of you intact. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want them to think you're a big softy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, us men, we, we have that problem a lot of times. And she sees that, you know, she sees that that's him. Really? The person that was just talking just now, that's him. You know? So, said Guts, you don't mean... Don't tell me you're leaving the Hawks. And he says, like I said, I'm fighting till the end of this campaign, even if I have to crawl. And then, and she says, and then afterwards, some people run up. They're like, Guts, Casca, Griffiths, come back. He said he heard you two were safe and advanced his schedule a day. Good dude. All right. That's good. All right, let's move on to the next one. He came back. That's cool. He came back to see them, make sure they're okay. That's good, man. Griffith's a good dude sometimes. <laughs> Captain. Captain Gotts. Yo. So they see Griffith. Let's see what happens. It's like, so she's apologizing to him. <laughs> Why are you doing that? It's like, I'm sorry, Griffith. Everyone had to deal with a mess because of me. Pushing myself when I wasn't well and going to the front was my mistake. Doing so exposed the men of my unit to danger. Not just them, either. Guts and his raiders, too. I'm not qualified to be a commander. Whatever punishment you... Hola, did she just... <laughs> Did he just slap her ass? I think he just slapped her ass. What? <laughs> he slapped her ass and now she jumped. She said, like, what, what, what was that for? <laughs> she, re she realizes she's right in Griffith's arms. And he's like, welcome back. No matter, me too, me too. They're like, come on, let's go toss one back, you know? They're like, you're really up to it, Captain? Yes, I want to drink some beer. Like, so she's like, the booze will disinfect me, moron. But hey, who cares? Celebrate the hundred man kill, eh? What's wrong? I was like, was he serious? She totally sees him in a different light. What's happening here? They're firing cannons. It's another battle. Okay, somebody getting blasted by cannon fire. Shooter Empire, stronghold of Doldry. So they over at my dude now this stuff is way too small I'm trying to fit way too much on this page right now so i'm gonna have to 
I'm not gonna strain my eyes to watch this. I wouldn't expect because you guys are watch, probably watching this on a smaller screen than I am. So we're probably gonna zoom in. Can we zoom in? I have no idea. Why? Why am I? I'm in the. I'm in the wrong place trying to do this. All right, so we're gonna zoom in just for a little bit. I'll zoom in. What am I doing? Okay. What? We're gonna be here for a while, guys. <laughs> So I'm trying to zoom in here. All right, let me just. Why are we using the number key to zoom in in this program? This number plus. Number plus. Yeah. I don't know what the hell that is. I'm not even trying to do that keyboard shortcut thing. All right, that's better. All right, then we'll go back to 100%. Um, all right, so we have, we're here in the place where these dudes got their, this like a message reporting our army's casualties are very high. The only unwounded men left are at headquarters. It's like, hmm, how could this be? How could the white tiger knights, one of Midland's two greatest forces be so easily doldry? It's, it's, it's nigh impregnable reporting. What now? Roughly a thousand riders from the main gate of the anime fortress. They are charging in the direction of our headquarters. <laughs> Nani, it can't be. <laughs> okay, so we're going to zoom back out now. I just did not want to strain my eyes so let's go back to 100 percent okay so okay so we got shooters most powerful knights the holy purple rhino knights Guessing they dress their horse like rhinos. Okay. Campfire of dreams. The end. Okay, so we got. Seems like we're back. Okay, we had a round table. A council meeting here. Council. Alright, so. As all of you are aware, this hundred year war was initiated by Truder's invasion into our kingdom's territory. This fortress of Doldre originally belonged to us for several hundred years and was pivotal in the defense of our border. But in the hundred years since it has fallen into Truder hands, ironically it has become the most important base of operations for the invasion against us. So this is the Battle of Doldry, chapter one. So I guess we got like three, like four chapters to go because I know this is like, there's like four chapters of this to end the volume, okay? So let's move on. However. Truder is currently undergoing a sudden crisis of internal conflict over the next succession to the tr to the throne. Whatever military might the Empire boasts, they shouldn't be able to spare their full potential for this battle. Surely, this is one in a thousand chance for us. If we let this opportunity slip away, Doldry, our land will never be recaptured. But how do you propose? Certainly, Doldry is impenetrable what's more the main occupying force is the mightiest of Truder's night corps led by the valiant general buscone the holy purple rhino knights not to mention that the white tiger knights one of midland's two greatest forces could not take the fortress what a bitter day of defeat what a bitter day of defeat okay so total Total warfare, so it's the only choice. That is perilous. In the current campaign, the primary force of the White Tiger Knights has already been reduced by almost four-tenths. 
there is no guarantee that even all-out war would cause Doldry to fall. Moreover, if the siege drags out, the inevitable result will be a pincer attack by the enemy when their main force flanks us. If we aren't careful, we could be wiped out. If we look at it overall, this campaign is a victory. Is there really any reason for us to pursue such a dangerous gambit? If we withdraw here and now, no, all the troops we've already deployed would have been in vain. The final objective of this campaign has always been the capture of Doldry. Failing that, there's no chance of reclaiming our territory. But now that we've lost the White Tigernites, who? How about you, Sir Griffith? If I were so ordered, the victor that you are, do you think there's anything you could do this time? I jest, of course. However, much of a godsend you are considered on the battlefield, there are some things one can't do. Man, is disrespecting Griffith like this in front of everybody, man? Bruh, you better shut up. So, Griffith is like, if his majesty so ordered me. And they're like, nonsense. You say it could be done? By you, sir? You could topple Doldry? You don't know anything. Listen to me. Do you have any idea how many times in the past hundred years that fortress has gone undaunted despite our constant efforts to capture it? Countless distinguished commanders and great generals have accepted the challenge and not one of them has been able to recapture Daldry. Now, you say you can? Never lost a bottle. Perhaps he's gone to his head a bit, hmm? I wouldn't doubt it. And the king now is talking now. Sir Griffith, was that sincere? So they're like, Majesty, then even you would, you cannot mean you believe him. This is reckless, no matter how much Sir Griffith might. Not even the White Tiger Knights could accomplish this. Whatever the strategy, an assault on that fortress is impossible without a great force of arms. They said. An assault on that fortress is impossible without a great force of arms. If we fail this time, the damage done to our army would be... And there's that. There is no need for a large force. I will require only the band of the hawk. <laughs> Talk your shit, Griffith. Talk your shit. <laughs> I love it. Anyways. They're like, ludicrous! With at most 5,000 cavalry? You would take on the fortress occupying force of 30,000? They're like, don't push your luck, young man. The main path of strategy is consistently to confront less with more. Don't think your clever little plans will work forever. Don't come. They're like, come. Why don't we allow this to pass without making a fuss, General? At this point, it seems whatever path we choose, we have no option but total warfare. Before that, allowing a single force to attempt a clever plan should not have any significant impact on the morale of the entire army. Besides, until now, there have been many groups of enemies outnumbering them that were yet defeated by the Band of the Hawk. Nothing says there is no chance this can. Daldry isn't so soft a target. Dodgy isn't so soft a target. They're like, Majesty, your decision? And he says, I command the band of the hawk to capture Daldry. Okay. They're like, relying so much on such a boyish newcomer like him, the dignity of Midland's army has fallen to the ground. And his majesty's gone senile. Alright, we got a big... <laughs> I want to see this battle. Are they going to take Guts? His Guts is still getting patched up. Okay, so, oh well. I suppose that's how it would feel to lose your own forces. You really seem to have bought into the White Hawk, 
Sir Laban. Now you see whether or not he lives up to your expectations this time. Come, I simply stated the truth, truth as it stands, Sir Owen. Besides, if he can't do it, I doubt there's anyone in Midland who can take Doldry. Certainly. Okay, so Griffith gets on his horse. All right, so we going to go get Doldry. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so who knows whether I should say this as a man, but he's quite the image of one. Mm. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> he's basically saying, man, this guy, look, he, he's like, he's, he acts like a man, but he doesn't look like one. <laughs> Me and you both, brother. They're like, distinguished commanders, huh? We might be fighting alongside the hero of the century. A lot of people getting that hero status in this volume. So it's like, they're like doldry, huh? It's like, who cares? It's a place. Fighting and gambling when you win. You win when you lose and lose. You lose, you lose. And five and two. Han, I don't know this game. Okay. <laughs> no way, Tanner Roga again. The captain wins all. Like, I've had some wicked bad luck. That does it. I ain't giving up till I break even. Three months wages. What's up? You got something on your mind? Guts is talking to Casca. It's like, don't worry. We've done stuff like this so many times already. Mr. Common composed himself, volunteered for this. The odds must be in our favor, right? Oh, she's worried about... Um... That they're going to go up against these 30,000 guys. She's worried about a Dolgy mission. Okay. I just hope he stays calm and composed. And Gus is like, what? What I told you that time. How the Hawks got involved in a territorial dispute a long time ago. Right. The nobleman I mentioned has promoted himself by way of his financial assets. He's supreme commander on the front lines for a certain empire. And he's like, hey, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Governor General Ginnon, supreme commander of the Trudor Empire's northern battlefront. That's his current title. So the dude that Griffith was... Selling his booty to is the dude that's commanding the freaking Trudor Empire. <laughs> that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So maybe that's the reason why he hasn't turned it. He didn't turn it down. Court. Okay. So, so my guy actually came back. He's still alive. He's like, but no injuries at all. Naturally. What is he saying? I, did he say something? Okay, so he said, ha, ah, ha, ah, ha, ha, that's why they call me Adon, the invincible results for just, you just don't fight and run away like a bitch every time, that's what happens, okay, so, so they're like, who said that, <laughs> would I be beaten that easily, it's like, that's definitely tenacious, I don't want to know what happened, I know you ran away, he's like, with the secret technique passed down through my cor corporal wits family for 700 years, Kasatsu Jizai playing dead. <laughs> I'm done with this guy, man. He's funny. He's a funny dude, man. So that's a technique, playing dead. At my disposal, I had no trouble deceiving his eyes. <laughs> but still, that brat, the next time we meet in battle, he won't escape me. <laughs> It's like, for shame, Adon. Why, it's your grace, General Biscone. He looks beastly. 
Not only have you suffered the disgrace of leading an entire mercenary troop to their deaths, but the sake of settling a grudge, but your younger brother Samson lost his life, and you dare to return alone in dishonor? He's like, no, 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 your grace. That was just, bro, this dude is going to kill this guy. Inexcusable. My guy, this dude don't play no games. That turned from a joking moment to serious. Oh my God, he killed him. Did he kill him? No. He didn't kill him. It's like Saradon. Bust his chops though. I hereby revoke all command authority from you for the remainder of the war. Just be thankful I'm not casting you into the dungeon. I thought he killed him. That's crazy. They're like, sir, please wait for us. The reports say that his adversary was just one man. And they're like, but that's can't but that's but that can't be. Believe it, buddy. Believe it. Just like Naruto. Believe it. It's like severe as always. I heard you from up here. Who the hell is this dude, man? Oh, for a, <laughs> for a second there, I didn't even realize that this was that it was statues. For a minute, I thought it was somebody standing here for a second. Okay, so. Said, forget that momentary indignity. That aside, a spy report just came in regarding the second force attempting to capture Daldry. You know them as well, yes? The band of the hawk? Uh-oh. Well, now, like you seem pleased. No. It is not that. I have simply heard that the Band of the Hawk has never been defeated. They seem more challenging than enemies of great number of fame. Hmm. By the way, there's something I must tell you before the battle begins. Like, sir, the leader of the Hawks, the White Hawk, you mustn't kill him so he knows that the White Hawk is Griffith. He's like, take him alive and bring him before me. He's like, yes, but sir, what? And he says, am I clear? It's your governor's command. Okay, so that's the end of chapter one of the Battle for Doldry. Let's, you know what? Let's take a break here, get to the next one. All right, these are very, um, <sighs> these are very dialogue heavy. So it's taking me a little bit more time to get through them. Okay, we got the Hawk Banners. I think that's the Hawk Banners. The Battle for Dorji Top Tier 2. Okay, so Guts is back on the battlefield. They're ready to go. And Mr. Judo is asking about Guts' injuries. How are your injuries? He's like, yeah, they've just about closed up. That stuff, that stuff of yours was no joke. It really bewildered the doc. Thanks, man. Still, though, uh, the more I look at that, the more I want to go <laughs> home. Its walls are two times higher and thicker than most, and with that cliff behind it and the base basin in clear view in front, it's no wonder it's been safe for a hundred years. Man, that's tough. To top it off, it's guarded by those rhino knights. Talk about bad news. Cripes. No problem. The place is the place is just a little big. If Griffith's got a plan as usual, we'd be fine. Uh, so he's like, hope you're right. Even so, nowhere to run. I'm surprised. So this dude comes out. And he's like, the White Hawk. What's he planning? Placing his men with their backs to the river. Knows he nothing... Of strategy? No, rather a mediocre officer would be incapable of accomplishing such an apparently foolish pre pretense. Very well. However, 
He's calculated his plan. Their numbers will only last so long in the end. I shall simply confront him head on. I don't know what the plan is, but we already know Griffith, he got strategies. You know what I mean? So he's like, however, the governor's partiality, is there some sort of connection between those two? Or else, yes, they have a connection, bruh. I haven't the time to deal with the governor's petty, vulgar taste. I am no more than a man of arms, and my mission is ever simply to defeat the enemy. Whether the enemy general lives or dies is the fortune of the moment. And the governor is sitting with his freaking pedophile ass. Um, hmm, the white hawk. To think that I would live to meet him by chance once more. What splendid fortune. That one night, even now I can't forget. He's reminiscing, you nasty bastard. He's like, he is fine wine. Worth the value of his weight in gold, an intoxicating phantom. The burns of that night still do not heal. I swear I will have you once more. Lover. <laughs> That's one hell of a dust storm, says Guts. And it's like, it's all part of the plan. Says Griffith. Are you alright? And Guts pulls his sword. Like, I can swing my sword. I'm good. It's like, good. Let's get started. I just hope he stays calm and composed. Okay, so. Doesn't look like Casca is there. Doesn't look like he's there. Okay, it's like, good. Let's get started. Hmm. That'll never happen with him. Not something like that. Okay, we'll see. It's like this is the end. Is he planning to leave for real? It's probably the last time I swing my sword beneath this banner. So Griffith is like, first you need advance. But I'll keep it together. I'll go into battle as captain of the Hawks Raiders. Nothing else. Draw swords. Vanguard charge Okay, so we're going in we're going in What they saying up here is like the enemy is moving the Vanguard. Let me let me blow that up for y'all for y'all benefit You know what I'm saying put that up 200% Right The enemy is moving the Vanguard is a force about 2,000 strong Directly controlled by Griffith. It's divided is already small force into two with the leader himself at the four. The fool. I don't know what kind of trick he means to pull. So, but to challenge the holy purple rhino knights personally with at most 2,000 behind him. It's like the hair leaping into the tiger's mouth. So be it. We will meet you. All troops forward. Destroy the enemy's first wave. Zoom back out. Okay. So everybody's charging into battle. And of course, it's like, ha, ah, so those are the fabled band of the Hawk Raiders. Amusing. We are the foremost unit of the Holy Purple Rhino knights whose charge has never once been halted it's about to stop today you're no match for ah 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 <laughs> you're no match let me help you out there buddy you're done already talk too much so guts takes this guy out Separates his, his torso from his waist. You already know how it is. It's like one of the enemy units is breaking through our center. They aren't stopping. 
One strong push to the center to kill the general. So that's his scheme. Guts is still going in. Wait a minute. Somebody took... Wait, somebody knocked his helmet off. Whoa. Wait a second. Somebody knocked his helmet off. Wait a minute. Who did that? Wait a minute. Somebody... This is serious. Okay, let's get to the next one, man. Yes. Yo, my dude, he dodged. And he knocked Guts' helmet off. Alright, so... Guts looks Guts looks at him, you know, with the smile. It's like, oh, a challenge. Ha ha ha. A challenge. Okay, so... It's like the general. Protect the general. Follow the captain. It's like, hit... It can't be. They aren't stopping. No matter how many enemies we face, the charge of the Holy Purple Rhino Knights has never been checked. Forget advancing. We're being pushed. General. Hmm? So that's him, sir. The Band of the Hawks Raiders captain. That man then. No wonder. It would seem the story that Adon's hun hundred mercenaries were killed by one man is not entirely untrue damn hawks they possess worthy adversaries do not panic this is merely a, a, a harassment tactic <laughs> the enemy's numbers are still few arrange formation and force them back the hawks and the rhinos are well matched though after all this is the extent of a small forces cap capabilities but that Buscone if he keeps fighting that way he'll kill Griffith mighty intent to disres disregard my command like is anyone there sir I am here prepare my bodyguards who remain in the fortress to ride I will take personal command on the battlefield Ooh, he's going out there okay like yes sir but the defense of the fortress it's like I care not at this rate they can't even get the get get near the walls. It's like, yes, sir. I won't sit back and let the returned hawk be shot down. He just wants Griffith back. He just wants the booty back. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god, this dude is he's the worst. Okay, so it's like now it'd be a good time. Boss. All hands withdraw. Fall back to headquarters. What? Why? He's like, come on, boys, run for it. Yeah. He's like, General, the enemy has begun to withdraw. Let's pursue. Inscr inscrutable? I don't know what that words mean. Inscrutable. He should have seen the outcome of such an attack from the start. Is this really the plan of the undefeated White Hawk? I wonder what is the plan? Are they trying to pull them out, you know, piece by piece, kind of pull them out? Uh, I don't know, pull them out of their stronghold to kind of get them into the open battlefield? I don't know what the strategy is. Meaning, meaning no disrespect, but perhaps you've overestimated them, sir. It was probably a desperate plan. To break through at one point and claim your head. There must be no other options left to a small force like the Band of the Hawk against the Holy Purple Rhino Knights. But sir, order us to pursue them swiftly. If we let the White Hawk escape like this, the men won't be able to contain their discontent over missing such a fruitful opportunity. Everyone is hot-blooded for a chance to bolster our renown even further. General, His Excellency, the Governor. What? Nani? What are you doing, Buscone? Your Excellency. The enemy is in flight. Would you let your chance at victory slip away? No, sir. However, and he took he takes command immediately like everyone listen. I will not permit the enemy leader Count Griffin to be killed. 
Griffith, to be killed. You shall capture him alive. In return, I promise whoever captures him a special double promotion and whatever monetary reward you wish. And it do to that. Governor, promising a thing like that? Never you mind, but what of but what of military discipline? And he shouts out like Biscon For mere on, I am in direct command. The holy purple rhino knights will pursue the enemy. Convey my orders to all your men. Be thorough. It's like general. It cannot be helped. All are to pursue the enemy. It's like, whoa. This ain't a good time to be bringing up the rear by myself. But as planned, they took the bait and came on. Right, everything's in the palm of your hand. Like it's always been. Talking to Griffith. God's talking to Griffith. Okay. So. He's like, aha, you mean we're going to take on all of them? Spectacular. It's like, take formation. It's do or die. The river is behind. We have no escape. We have no escape route. Lay down your lives. There's no other chance for survival. But if we do survive, we will stand victorious. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this wow. I wish I could draw like this. Wish. Oh my god, look at this man. This is beautiful. Beautiful. It's like they all went down. They're like, mm, okay. Is that Casca? So it's this looks like Casca. I think this is Casca. Up on looks like she's on the top of a cliff or something. And it's like ah, what in the world's going on? I can't see through the dust cloud. Well, you know, there's about one in a million chance we'll actually lose. I heard whoever captures the enemy leader can name his reward. Just about everyone from the fortress is out there. Wish we could have gone too. Forget about it. Too much competition. Ah, oh, I think they're pulling them away from the freaking place. So, because all of them are pursuing them, they're pulling them away. And it looks like Casca is going to attack the castle. And her troops. Because they did split in half. So it's like, wh wh what? What is it out there? Yeah, Casca coming for that ass, boy. Coming for that ass. All right, they're like enemies. Where they? And he's like Russian. It's like first division block the gates. Absolutely no enemy messengers get inside. All others proceed according to plan. <laughs> Swiftly, there's no time to lose. It's like, uh, uh, isn't that? Okay, final chapter, I think. Yeah, I think we had a final final chapter. Final chapter. Final. All right, let's get it. All right. Battle of Doldry. Battle of Doldry, Chapter 4. Hurry. Take control of the gate and walls. Don't even bother with the keep. Sh sh oh, so they did leave somebody behind. Sh shock. Shocker. Done with the... Oh, Adon. Wait a second. It's Adon. Adon. Okay. <laughs> Adon got armor on. <laughs> Costco versus A Adon now. It's like, oh, you again, huh? You're really a tenacious cockroach. And what's with that armor? <laughs> they also call me Invincible Baron Adon. Even if I am a cockroach. You have no choice but to kneel before my stamina. As long as you still have knees to kneel with, of course. Hmm. I, Adon, saw through the schemes of you common rabble ages ago. Yeah, right. Shut up. Therefore, I personally accept. Accepted the duty of protecting the fortress and have been watching for you to walls brazenly in here. <laughs> Kosuke's like, liar. <laughs> he was probably forced to stay behind. It's like, it's no lie. 
Reveal yourselves. Ooh. And it's like, uh, so a bunch of guys came out of nowhere. It's like, you see, my blue whale knights left inside the fortress for this very moment. Even if their numbers were reduced in the previous battle, they're never, they'll, they'll never lose to a petty platoon led by a little girl like you. Listen, no one of them must be allowed to leave here alive. Get them. Now come, girl. This time I get revenge for my little brother Samson. No more mercy for you, not this time. On my pride, as an imperial aristocrat, you will be my plaything. <laughs> so the fight ensues. Continues. And Griffith and Guts is out here doing their thing. Chopping up dudes. They don't know what's going on back at the capital. The Kazas is like, what are they doing? Haven't they been able to capture Griffith yet? The enemy's resistance seems more intense than we expected. In any case, some terribly skilled horseman is blocking the way to Count Griffith. It appears our army is having trouble approaching him. What? <sighs> because Guts is in the way. <laughs> what? What strength? Somebody stop him. General! Is the general going to get in the fight finally? Damn. Guts goes after the general. He goes after the general. They clash swords. Boom. They clash swords. They're bored on, on horses too. They're clashing swords. It looked like, looked like Guts, Guts took a hit. And gave a hit. And they're there <laughs> fighting with their, their sword. They're like, amazing. You can't see their weapons. If you approached, now you'd get caught in their blade wind. Casca in here. Look like he put <laughs> Adon on his ass. Um, well, why? You could hardly lift a finger against me before. And she's like, I wasn't at my final form. <laughs> this is my final form. <laughs> she's like, I wasn't in top form then. Women have their own set of circumstances. I think she was on her period at the time, I think. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was. What? Are you telling me you were on your period? And she's like, don't shout it. <laughs> That monster doesn't stand a chance. It was her period. Sis really is incredible. The enemy numbers. Few. Just cut through them. It's like hurry. The fate of the ox depend on this one battle. Ah. Oh yeah. Big brother is here. Of course. Pippin, big brother Pippin. It's like Pippin. Damn it, it's just a matter of time till we're wiped out. It's like, no way. Even if we run, where would we go? The river is behind us. If we're gonna drown anyway, I'd rather die fighting. It's like little Rickards flipped out. Aha, my army is overwhelming, isn't it? On the other hand, there's Buscone. Why is a single mounted man taking him so long? Because he's fighting guts, bruh. Understand. So he says, so they're still going at it. Guts versus Buscone. So he's like, he's strong. I feel more dead than alive. Even worse than fighting those hundred mercs. If I don't put my life on the line, I'm a dead man. And it's like, no. It ain't as bad as that time. It's not as hopeless as it was then. When he was fighting Nosferatu. <laughs> it's like, ah! And they... 
the she's wiping the floor with Adon, man. Body in that dude. She's ready. Sir, Sir Adon. There's only one thing left to do. You gonna play that again? So she so Adon bows. Is he surrendering? Sorry about that, guys. I just moved my entire thing. I don't even know why. Usually have it like that. A little bit more. Right. So, Seredon, for, forgive me. So he starts begging. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she is smiling. She's like, whatever else, please spare my life. I humbly ask that you somehow find it in your heart to forgive my many and frequent of offenses. I beg of you. Seredon, this is just too much. You must be kidding. It was your fault we all got left behind here. And yet, s sir, that's incredibly uncool. She's like, oh, shut up. A great commander can also see when it's time to give up. <laughs> Everything I've done has been under the order of the general. I didn't have the slightest bit of personal grudge against you, miss. Faith is such a sorrowful thing. That we've met only as enemies and we're forced to do battle. Really? Don't you agree? So ahead, go ahead. If you want this fortress, you're welcome to it. We won't stop you. So please, my life at the very least. <laughs> it's like, is this guy really nobility? Did I actually take him seriously as an opponent? He's almost beyond laughable. <laughs> it's but he said, but seriously, nah, wait a minute. He was tricking her. Fired a, he fired an arrow at her. No, it got her. And they're like, sis. He's like, ah, you fool. The secret, adv oh my God, not another secret technique. The secret advanced archery technique passed down through my Korbowitz family for a thousand years resha jinra <laughs> jinra ha that's not just an arrow it was dipped in a potent narcotic furious attack thunderclap burst <laughs> in other words your evil deeds are at an end you bitch and she's like i've got no time to listen to you laugh any longer and that is the end of the volume guys thank you guys for checking this out if you're over here on the google drive checking it out man make sure you go back to youtube see my review as always man late in my man i know you're gonna put the timestamp for the review over there on bit shoot i will make sure i pin that comment so thanks a lot guys for coming and checking it out over here um and i will see you guys over at youtube for the review All right, so here we go. I'm going to make sure that I don't do this review for too long. But this was a pretty good volume to read through, man. <clears throat> As you can see, my voice my voice is almost gone. That's why I said it takes a lot more to do to do read throughs. It does. It takes a lot more out of me. Um so yeah, man, these chapters were awesome. I love that it started it off, giving us a lot more on Casca's background, right? So, the thing about Casca's background that I love the most is, is her relationship with Griffith. And how they met, how she views him, and understanding the stuff that he had to do to achieve... And to get to where he is today, he has no problem with with selling the booty. You know, he has no problem with doing that. I don't think it's something that he wanted to do, but he felt like he had to do it to get the funds that he needed to fund their, you know, adventures and the stuff that they were doing as mercenaries. They needed the funds. So... He felt like he had to do that. But at the same time, the reason the the, the, the the other stuff that I talk about when it comes on to 
Casca's the background, the story that she was telling Guts. Then they got attacked. I love the fact that Casca, even though when she was introduced in the series, from what we've seen, the backstory of Guts, you know, even though she was basically introduced as, you know, sort of a a bitch of some sorts, right? She was introduced as much. You, you know, you felt like, you know, she came off a little arrogant and stuff like that. But now we're kind of getting to see who she really is. And I'm glad they did that because now she's become one of my favorite characters based on, you know what I'm saying, just the stuff that she goes through, um, understanding that the reason why she froze in place and she wasn't well, you know what I'm saying? She was on a period and it's a time of weakness for, for women. It's a time of weakness. So, you know, but now she's, she, she, you know, now she's giving, um, Adon that work, you know what I'm saying? She give she giving him that work and let him understand, boy, I was on my period. You can't hold a candle to me when I'm in my final form. <laughs> right? So that was pretty cool, man, to see. Um, also getting to understand a little bit more about Guts, you know, after the fact when they got rescued and everything. Um, I mean, just the feat of him, this, you know, basically destroying a hundred men. That was ridiculous out of this world kind of stuff you know what i'm saying and we're not talking about a guy with superpowers here we're talking about a guy with just a guy with a sword okay he, he just has a sword ain't no superpowers ain't no magic here you know what i'm saying nothing like that you know what i'm saying so guts is just that good he's just that good you know what i'm saying so that was pretty cool man um so i'm just talking about the main aspects of the things that were going on just learning more about Griffith's past and also learning more about who Guts is as a person. Um, she never, never knew that, you know, he would protect her like that because he understands, you know, he, he understands. But, you know, he plays this reverse psychology with how, you know, he wants us to view him, you know, and how you want, you know, how he wants people to view him in general, you know. So in, in terms of that, I totally understand he uses this kind of reverse psychology and kind of kind of peep, still keep people at a distance because of the stuff that he's been through in his past. So he he lets people in to a certain point and then he, you know, kind of backs away in, in, in certain ways. So you got the the um, the general or not the general, the um, the dude that came down to command the dude. That, you know, likes little boys and stuff with his nasty self. Anyways, so he took over the army. I'm not... Sh I think the, the, the strategy was to pull them, pull most of the army away from the castle so that Casca can go take it over. I don't know what's going to be the result of, you know, this foolishness that Adon just pulled um, by, you know... But he did get her. I don't think he got her where she's she don't look worried because i think maybe she didn't get pierced by the by the arrow um you like it didn't pierce her her chest plate so it does seem like she's worried or if it does if it did pierce her it didn't pierce skin so the poison not going to take no effect or not going to matter um i hope she cuts his head off immediately but <laughs> that's just my thoughts but we already know man this series is so good. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it. Every time I do a, do a read through, man, I just it's like I'm falling in love with something all over again. You know, every single time. So it's it's just, it's just awesome, man. The art was absolutely beautiful in this volume. One more time. So I'll see you guys for the next one. Of course. Um. Hopefully. Um, the next one, I think the next one, what I'm going to do is put it up early on the Patreon and then you guys will have it, whether it's, you know, three, maybe five days later, I'll release it on YouTube, but that's one of the benefits of being a Patreon off terabyte reacts is that you get early access to my read throughs. As I said, full reactions will not be on the Patreon. So you don't have to worry about that. As soon as those are done, they go up there and you guys can hold me accountable for that i don't care because i know that's something i decided a long time ago that i would not do so 
if you guys have suggestions on books as i said ipo and all that stuff is going to be taken care of later so i'll see you guys next time because somebody decided to start vacuuming in in my house right now so i don't want you guys to be annoyed by that so let me end this video thank you guys so much for tuning in and as always man just don't, don't remember to comment subscribe to the channel man if you're new and also man leave a comment in the comment section this is your boy terabyte reacts and i will see you guys next time for some more berserk read-throughs